au guip. What's up, everybody? This is The Quad with Chris Young. As always, I am Chris. We got producer Josh. Hello. Haley the Bear. Once we get our Instagram back, we're going to have to start tagging core in these little <laughs> clips, and maybe one day they will sponsor us. You act like I haven't been doing that. <laughs> and Ryan from Miami. Hello. <laughs> wow. Man, I need your teams to lose more often because this you're very <laughs> Well, then he is a Miami fan, so that won't be a problem during football season. <laughs> oh. Spoken like a true Bears fan. Come on. I at least accept it. You don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You were trying to yell about the merits of Tua because Tyreek Hill said one nice thing about him. I did see. Uh, listen, I, uh, said he I was subscribed to Tua. So. From two yards out. I did, nice. I did see something where they were talking about. Um, <laughs> somebody had posted with her at the Chesney concert at Soldier Field, and they're like, "Finally, somebody took a W." <laughs> at Soldier Field. How many tight ends do you think attended that concert? All oh, of, all of them. Well, no, all, all the tight them. ends were just here in Nashville this these last few days. She would know that. That's right. <laughs> I, of course, I would. Are we talking My about trainer the, trains it, them? Uh, huh? The position? Are we talking about the position or? Well, they hold a tight end okay. university every year here okay. in Nashville. Um, which, by the way, um, looping back around to what was just said at the top of this, if you go looking for our IG right oh, now, geez. yet again, someone has hit the algorithm enough reporting that we are the fake account, which is absolutely ridiculous. Which we are not. No. No, we're not. And One day we'll get that blue check mark and this won't be a problem. Well, that's something that we're actively working we're, on. We're too. working on it. So in the meantime, who won the poll? No idea. Couldn't log in long <laughs> no enough idea. To, uh, <laughs> to put it up. Great. What was it? What was it last week? Sunrise or sunset. Oh, dang. That would have been a good we're, one. We're coming back to it. Yeah, that, yeah, no, no, no. We'll put it back up. We'll this put is it unfinished up. business right now. <clears throat> So on one hand, we appreciate you, uh, <laughs> you know, flagging all of the fake accounts. They are very annoying. None of us are hitting you up on the DMs. None of us want Amazon gift cards. No one wants to fly you in to have a private sit down. None of these things are true. That goes for all of us individually. For every single one of us and the quad fake podcasts as well. We are not. We are not DMing you. I don't DM people. He is in a secret relationship cards. for the last three years with you. I'm sorry to tell I'm you. I'm not. It's a, it's a telltale sign if you can look at the activity on these pages. If you notice on our page, we get a lot of likes, a lot of comments. If you go to these other pages, they're usually, even though they may have a lot of followers, the, the activity on each post is not it. That's not them. You know what our page is. You'll find our polls. Well, again, I, I, I hate it both ways. One, I hate it that people do that. And we've talked about this before, but two, I hate that there are people out there falling for it. Otherwise, they wouldn't keep doing it. Yep. Yeah. So just heads up. If you listen to us, guys, you aren't dating any of us. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> it's not a thing. Not a thing. Speak for yourself. Speak for yourself. <laughs> okay. Oh, Lord. All right. Um, so we don't know. We do not have a poll winner. We do have uh, a new hot take for this week. We're going to do it anyway. Um, we'll double up. It's fine. Yeah. We'll get as back. soon as we get that back online we've got people at ig double hot double hot double hot too hot too hot to handle too hot for the hot tub if you know that joke wow um <laughs> take your take your <laughs> take your Advil all right, right yeah let's go to music music at the end of a bar top 10, top 10. officially today very very pumped you guys thank you Ooh. Um, still nine spots to go fingers crossed, but looking really, really good. Um, just so much love to everybody out there loving on that song. Uh, me and Mitchell are both pumped. He's got two songs in the top 20 right now. If you, uh, look at his, uh, his solo song that he's got out. So he's really excited. I'm excited for him. 
And yeah, it's it's amazing going into really finally the middle of the summer. We are now about to be past the middle of the year, which Crazy. is just Crazy. wild. It's just wild. Um, but thank you guys so very much. Anybody that has supported that song means the world to me. It's festival season now, right? It's been festival it's been season. Festival but season? I was just saying we're about to cross into July, which is technically if... I would have to do the breakdown of exactly how many weeks in we are, but it, you know, it's the seventh month. So, oh, yeah. um, it is also hotter in Nashville than it is in California by a lot in Florida, <laughs> and Florida. In Florida to be fair. <laughs> it's yeah. crazy. That's absolutely crazy. Um, but it, it's been a lot of fun. I had some friends in town the other night. And if you follow me on TikTok or on my IG, you saw me jump up at Tootsie's and I want to ask you guys a question just while we're here, because I find this hilarious. Um, if I go to my page right now, um, hopefully this is not going to make noise before I can cut it off. Cause I don't know what's the first thing that's going to pop up on my, for you page. <laughs> you never <laughs> know. Terrifying. You never know. Um, all right. So I, I sat down and I made this video uh, with a professional camera on the bus, full song, like, here you go, guys. Here's here's me playing music note. Right. Right? Um, my label has been kind of on my butt about trying to get me to do it. The TikTok content. Well, but specifically that kind of content. <laughs> sure. Now, bear in mind that I've got a video with like four and a half million views that's a lawn chair. <laughs> um, I'm not even in it. So like, it's the algorithm. It's a little weird on TikTok, right? You never know what's really going to pop off. Um, <clears throat> so I make this video. I post it the other day, 15 second clip of me on stage at Tootsie's downtown in front of the crowd, twice as many views and likes. <laughs> it's literally what my, my friend Tyler Reeve sitting in the corner with a big group of us and filming me on stage for 15 seconds on his iPhone. I got that video. That was me. No, I used his. No, that's mine. I used his. I've got one from him too. So unless you send it to him. Nope. That's me. All right. Well, this is not the one I'll I used. take. I'll take photo. I'll take credit. <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> no, you're demand. You're demanding. Um, yeah, credit she's, she's you demanding credit. Exactly. I'm going to tell spoilers on the movie just for that. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. So it, it's just wild to me. Do you think that it's because people feel like they're being um, marketed to with a really nice one, and the the, the cell phone know. one feels like it's voyeuristic? They're like, oh, this is a just a thing that happened that I got to see. <sighs> Maybe. I mean, because I've seen that I've seen that for like smaller artists that I work with. Right. When they do like the really nice, well done one, people are like, eh, scroll by. But I mean, it's not, by the way, it, it's not a small nice, number. Nice, well done to the point of what you see a lot of, which, by the way, I, I'm not knocking this. I think it's great that people allow it. But where I'm singing along to the finished polished right. track. Yeah, it's actually you singing. It was just me with an acoustic guitar playing the song down. So it's the same concept Idea. on both of them. One of them just looks cleaner, more, more polished. better lighting, yeah. more polished, and, and it got Half way less many. Yeah, views. It's the weirdest thing. We're in such a weird time with content and consuming stuff. Yeah. The only TikTok I care about is the clock. <laughs> Okay, Kesha. Is that is that your song for this week? Is Kesha? It can be. Uh, funny enough, I was I was watching a documentary a couple days ago that popped up on the History Channel. Yes, I said it. Um, I'm, I'm with that, bro. Come on. But it was talking about the history of Jack Daniels and kind of how their image started getting a little wild and out of control once it was like all the rock stars posing with it, and one of the people they dropped was Kesha. Oof. I was like, I don't know if I'd call her a rock star, pop star. Famous. It, would that be rock? It, it's it's not really pop rock, rock maybe? No, pop no. rock? No, okay. but they, they like showed they showed Slash and then they showed Kesha. And I was like, it's about as diametrically very opposed. different. Yeah. Um But yeah, it, it was uh it was kind of fun, man. I haven't been downtown Nashville in a while. 
and it's one of those things that you just kind of have to prepare yourself. You know what you're getting yourself into at this point. It's especially on the weekend. Oh, it's yeah, it's a lot. Um, and we like bar hopped around and like went to a bunch of different places and watched bands and ran into people I hadn't seen in a while. And it was cool. It was a lot of fun. Also, what you didn't see in that video is uh, someone was like, let's do Whiskey Lullaby. And I'm like, okay, uh, do you know how to play it? And they're like, no. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know it. That made me so angry. So you Brad, have you on stage. Pick one of your songs to duet. Why Brad, would you pick Whiskey Lullaby, the most depressing song on Broadway? Are you serious? That Brad made me Paisley, so mad. If you, if you see that, I am so sorry for butchering the chords to that song. <laughs> like she literally I sang why? it, right? Yeah. Why? But, <laughs> This is the wrong course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably wasn't that bad. Um, okay. Anyway, uh, just a reminder. Yes, this is a shameless plug, but if you haven't already gotten a copy or or started streaming the deluxe, make sure you go do that. Um, very important to me. Very excited about a lot of things going on with those songs. And who knows that one of those may end up being the next single. We don't know exactly what we're doing yet. So could be anything. Yeah. And I'm definitely playing and mixing them in to live shows. So you're going to want to know those if I throw one out there. And uh, also at the same time, shout out to everybody that already did, because when I've played any of them live, it's really surprising how many people are singing along with them. So thank you. I appreciate that. Any updates on anything music related from anybody else? I am playing the listening room this Thursday night. There you go. With my friend Joseph Gallant. And I don't remember the other person on it. I feel so, so <laughs> terrible about that just now. I just realized that halfway through the sentence that I <laughs> I do not know her name. Uh, hold, please. Wait. Oh, I want no. to make sure she gets the proper due. Her name is Tiff Goss. I hope that's hope I didn't hurt your feelings if you're a listener. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> So yeah, haven't done that in a while. So that'll be a... So one of my bucket list things I have yet to do in Nashville is attend a show at the listening room. So... Are you back? Maybe a little Thursday night action. I will be back uh, tomorrow night. So Make sure you get I your tickets. We are, you know, close to us. <laughs> We're not that close to us. <laughs> Still 180 tickets available. Well, you know what? Um, how about this? If you've never been to the listening room, maybe now's the time. Maybe me and Ryan show up. Could be a good time could be a good time for everyone you're working aren't you yep all right listening room it is thursday night baby by the way did you hear randomly behind me i'm, I'm, kidding, I'm kidding i'm gone oh. He's I, was, out of town. I was getting ready to he's say trying, what i'm doing it this weekend <laughs> oh, well, well, it's like so you come out see me and ryan by the yeah. way i'll be in by the way i'll be wisconsin my, i'm on my way to I'll albuquerque fa- <laughs> i'll facetime you in by the way did you hear in the background there was that FaceTime going I, off in the background? What was no, that? No, that that was a that was a landline phone. I'm at my parents' house right now. They have I have a not been around still? a I have not been around a landline phone in forever. So I got startled when I heard it ring. And I'm like, was my cell phone going off? No, it's a landline. Why is there landline. a Yoda poster at your parents' house? For so those this is that my are dad's just audio <laughs> only. I, more of a reason this to watch this my, on YouTube. Yeah. Yes, yeah, this is my dad's office, uh, which uh big fan of the, the saying do or do not there is no try by yoda and so i got him that poster and so there it is right there on the wall and i figured for those watching us on youtube yoda will be uh along with us for the entire ride of this podcast so uh, right. uh much fun at us menacingly <laughs> very very menacing photo of yoda for sure yes he looks like he's staring at the back right said the whole the whole podcast <laughs> he is kind of he's casting. got a vendetta against you yeah he's casting a spell right now He's, he's well, judging, he, but it's okay. He's using the force. I know he doesn't cast spells. He's not a wizard. No. <laughs> yes. That's, that's Harry Potter. Um, so, uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico on Friday. Saturday, I'll be at Fiddler's Green Amphitheater right outside Denver. Englewood, Colorado, technically. And then Sunday, I will be in Deadwood, South Dakota. Oh, man. I, I love Deadwood. Deadwood's one of my favorite places. I've only ever been there once, and I don't feel like I like actually went and looked around and I appreciate the history of that area. No, so I I'm, a, feel... I'm a psycho. Like whenever I work, every time I worked um, Sturgis, the biker rally, I always made sure to make it to Deadwood just because I'm really big into cowgirls and cowboys. And that's one of the main spots. 
So, and there's like a little casino. It's like the, just an old fashioned town and it's a lot of fun. And someone that I actually worked with in South Dakota is running all those concerts. So let he me, asked if I was going and I was like, let me put it this oh. way. I'm playing a place called outlaw square. Yeah. If, if you don't think they're, if you don't think they're leaning into that enough, I think it's time for the, hat, bro. <laughs> the cowboy hat. The cowboy hat. The this is the time to do it. A city by the name of Deadwood seems to be very uh, frightening to just embark on, for the record. There was so, also a uh, show about Deadwood. Yeah, it was on so. HBO. It's not TV, it's HBO. I, I guess I need to be be cultured a little bit on Deadwood. I, uh, Again, I'm, it's I'm a into really it. cool Let's town. Let's go. I just scared the crap out of myself. So as we're sitting here, um, I see this message pop up from Bryce Long, mm-hmm. who... Uh, I've written songs with has had a lot of hits on the radio that you guys have heard, but um, it just says, see why I'm at Sony. Let me know what time and I'll walk over there. And I'm like, did I schedule a right? <laughs> Surely to God, I didn't because it's Monday. I know better. Right. And, it, and then I look back through my messages. He wants me to sign a guitar. So I was like, Whew. I know I told him I had this. Yeah. I know I did. Oh man, that made me panic for a second. Um, <laughs> Those are the worst texts. You're like, what did I do? Uh, by the way, for anyone wondering anything that I've written with him, there was a song, I believe off second or third record, third record um, that was old love feels new that a lot of people mm-hmm. remember. Uh, that was that back song. when they actually had bonus tracks. That was technically a target bonus track, oh. I believe on that record. Um, <laughs> but it's a song that I wrote with Bryce. It's just the two of us. You know what I miss? Do you remember hidden tracks? Yes. The last track would go for there's like no, nine, nine oh, minutes. And there's then, no good way to do it anymore. Not with streaming. The last, the only one I know of a hidden track was on Alanis Morissette's album. And that last song goes forever. You say her name one more time. Alanis Morissette. Okay. Um, I don't remember which record. I feel like it's the, I'm, I'm circling 1996 somewhere thinking like Usher first record. <clears throat> and the last one, it kept going like a bunch of blank like tracks. Like My Way? Yeah, it was the My Way record, and I thought it kept going to like 90, sure? 99. And then the like the 99th song was the hidden track. Like you had to just keep scrolling through. Was, I'm trying to think of the very first one that I found, but that a lot of people listening to us right now are like, what the hell are you talking about? They're like, what's a bonus track? How'd you think I said her? By the way... Um, you guys brought up the YouTube channel, so just want to plug that again. It is youtube.com slash C slash the quad with Chris Young. Just a, a little bit of patting ourselves on the back here. Congratulations on two achievements. Number one, 30,000 views overall. Let's go. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Woo. And then not only that, 5,000 hours of watch time. So quad pod squad, we love you. Thanks for watching, subscribing, commenting, liking, sharing, and make sure you subscribe, like, share, and reshare, and do it all over again. We appreciate and watch the it. ads. You. We love you. I know it sucks, mm-hmm. but watch the ads. Um, actually, I, I don't think this is the record you're talking about, but his first record um, was co-executive produced by Sean Combs. And it was in 94, and the first song... it. I mean, I don't even, I'm sure if I went back and listened to this, I would remember the song, but this is really funny to me because it's the same title as one of my hits was Usher's first single that went gold. Think of you. Interesting. Oh, what? Like, I don't remember that song off the top of my head no. and I know most I of his either. catalog. Yeah. So. In my brain, it's you make me want was the first single of his. <clears throat> yep. Oh. But, nope. God, that, that confessions album back in the day was so good. Yeah. That record oh. was great. All right. Um, what are you listening to? I'm going to go uh, not with Ryan because I see your eyes moving looking at your screen, which means you're obviously uh, scrolling for something. Listening to lots of things recently. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> with your eyes. I bet you are. Lots of listening. Well, I'll go. A um, little, little different for me. Justin Bieber. Sorry. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Are you? Are you really? Yeah. I mean, I I'm like not it. sorry for picking that song, but that's my song. I've actually, I've actually grown to really like Justin Bieber's music. He like, I don't know good. if I should be admitting He's that publicly, like a mini but like Usher, but Usher's the one who well, I was gonna say, <laughs> helped him a lot yeah. in the baby video. Yeah. Come on. I, I don't know. I just really like, 
uh, even Peaches, like I, I feel like his music is just it's it's elevated. He's taking it to a new level. So I'm I'm all in on the Bieber game. Hey man, I feel like I should have gone to the Bieber show in Nashville. Dig dig deep back in the old stuff. My way, my way 2.0. Those records are good. There's good songs on there. There really mm-hmm. is. Biebs, let's go. That should be me holding your hand. That should, okay. <laughs> all right. So since you since since you went in a different direction, I'm going to go a different direction. I got into a little bit of an old school emo kick. Um, given the fact that I looked up uh, shows coming to First Bank Amphitheater, Taking Back Sunday was one of them. So I got into a, a Taking Back Sunday jam fest. So you're still last summer by Taking Back Summit. So uh, Sunday is on that. Yes. <laughs> it so, seems like so you're having good. a lot of trouble saying Sunday right there. Taking Back uh, Sunday. You know, you're, you're introducing. It's Monday. So, yeah. You know, problems with Sundays when you're, you know, become Mondays. Yeah. I would love to take it back to Sunday, actually. That'd be great. Okay. Anyways, I was listening. <laughs> my What I'm listening to these days uh, is another Posty song, because we all know I love Post Malone. I have a little history of saying multiple songs and multiple artists that I listen to all the time, but that's okay. Um, so this song is called I Like You, and then in peri- per- parentheses. Parentheses. <laughs> parentheses. You guys are having some wow. trouble with words right now in parentheses a happier song but um featuring doja cat and of course it's posty doing his thing and it's another great song and it makes me want to just dance have i called out nate smith yet i don't think so i mean a lot of people already know this song by now if you don't you really need to go listen to it but uh whiskey on you by nate smith um great dude such a good song such a good song like a lot of his stuff is is haters like <laughs> they're good <laughs> so uh definitely go check him out if you haven't already uh let's go to sports sports ryan how about that college world series Ole miss <laughs> dude i mean the rebels hotty toddy right how about how about omaha you know instead of omaha it's omaha with Ole miss i mean god those rebels are good jello shot champions of, of all time i mean it's great so the avalanche just killed it. Is that abs and six? Was that? I, w- I mean, that killed it. I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say killed it. It was four games decided by one goal, and and both teams had a blowout. And one game that was seven that zero. Now, again, both teams had blowouts within the yeah, six game series. Yeah, that one was seven zero though. Yeah, but both both teams had blowouts. The, the lightning <laughs> blew them out the, the following game. It so, looked like they had a blowout um, in their diaper last night for sure. <laughs> Uh, up 1-0 in that game, and, and Avs did what they do best, which is score comeback goal and come back to win games, win on the road. Look, that is one of the, if not the greatest hockey teams we've ever seen. 72 wins in this season. It ties the Canadians, Oilers, and Red Wings for the most in NHL history in those respective years. Um, they were they were incredible. They dominated at times during the playoffs. I actually thought the Lightning challenged them more than any team did in the postseason. And for a team that had, had won back-to-back titles, you you had to you had to dethrone them, and they did. Um, and to win on the Lightning's ice and to to basically end that dynasty and and possibly start one of their own. Congratulations to Colorado. They were they were incredible. Ten come from behind wins in the playoffs. That's that's tied for the most in a single postseason. So they they earned it. I would say there are two factors at play here. Um, game five, they kind of laid down, <clears throat> and I think they had the pressure to win at home. I actually think they had less pressure on the road to close it out because it had been so long. And they've been so good on the road this season, too. Yeah, yeah. they've been fantastic on the road. Uh, that is a young core. Five years ago, they were, I believe, statistically the worst team in the NHL or one of the worst, and now they are winning the Cup. Um, By the way, Kale McCarr, who is going to be a superstar in this league for a long, long time, he's the only player ever to win college's best player Rookie of the Year, Norris Trophy for the top defenseman, MVP of the playoffs in the Conn Smythe, and a Stanley Cup. He is 23 years old. Yeah, I believe he's, he's the youngest, youngest winner of the Conn Smythe ever. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's just insane like how good he is and how good they're going to be well, for years to come. Well, that's the thing. They've got at least a year or two of that nucleus that no one's going anywhere unless they just feel like trading somebody or getting rid of them. By the way, so, the two favorites to win the cup next year, Colorado and Tampa Bay. So those are those according to the betting favorites are, are once again the, the odds on favorites to repeat to well, face were, each other in the Stanley Cup. They well, were yeah. just both in it. Of course they're gonna be the favorites. They are. The, they haven't even made trades or 
she's she's not wrong. Of course, they're the odds <laughs> so on favor. If you go with the same home, exact teams. Vegas sometimes, you know, likes to, to keep us guessing. But I do want to say, and, and just kind of an, an homage to what was an incredible three-year run for the Lightning, 71 playoff games over those three seasons, the most ever, ever. No one has ever played 71 playoff games over three seasons. To do that, given all the things that went on, playing in a bubble, uh, repeating last year, all the changes that have happened, and then the guys, they, by the way, they were without Braden Point. I continually say that he has been their best postseason player over the last three years, and they missed him all almost right. this entire well, Stanley Cup series. All so, right. all right, time out, right? Thank, I, I get it. You had to get in balls. your Florida man moment and, and talk about Absolutely. how great they were in losing the cup and not dynasty is not over. By the way, next year. Hold on. Can they're, we they're hold on? Can we just like? Can we get yeah. a definition of the word dynasty right now? I you believe, win twice. I believe it's three. I think it's three. You have to win three within what? Say four or five years. Four or five years. I agree. So let me let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. I, I'm just going to put it out there because the Heat made four consecutive finals, but only won two of those titles. They're not a dynasty. You would consider them a dynasty? No, because they didn't win. I would not they consider them a dynasty. I would consider the Spurs team that came back and beat them and yep. didn't miss the playoffs for 20 straight years a dynasty. The Duncan Spurs is a dynasty. For the Lightning over the last four years to have had the most points in NHL history, make three consecutive cups, win two of them. Okay. I mean, that's, that's, Hang on. that's Hang dynasty. On, dude, I'm, that's dynasty. All right. I'm going to mute you <laughs> if you don't stop. You have was, to get up to I do was that. polite. The, no, I don't. I'm, we've got it on the board right here. Go ahead. <laughs> Try and talk. Can I talk yeah, now? Can you hear me? Gone. Oh. <laughs> Unmute him. Um, look, I get it. They are historically great. And you want to talk about the fact that they made it three years in a row, won two of them. That's amazing. It's awesome. No one can take that away. It's from incredible. Them. This I just is, don't know it's a dynasty. This is all about the avalanche. This is about them winning. And by the way, you talk about them missing a player. Weren't they out one of their uh, main guys with a, with a hand injury most of that uh, finals run? I mean, everybody's injured this time. Yeah, 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 exactly. Injured. Everybody's injured. Everybody's so, missing somebody. It's it's it. When you get to the last game, it's who can get out the win. For them to clinch on the road, I thought was impressive. It's a telltale sign of how good that team has been on the road. Like you said, Josh. Like you alluded to, um, they, I I think nailed it in Vegas. Those are probably the two best teams in the NHL right now, hands down. And it's offense just as much as it is their defense. Mm-hmm. And I think both of them have done it in different ways. The way that they put those teams together, you look at how far back Colorado was, like I said, five, six years ago in the landscape of things. And then you look at the run that Tampa Bay's been able to go through. That You can't take anything away from either one of these teams. Somebody had to win it. I'm glad to see a team that hasn't had it in what, 20 years? 21 years. 21 years. Who was uh, originally a Canadian team. And then they were in Florida for a while the last time they won, I believe. Uh, they, yeah, they beat the Panthers the yeah. last time they won. So it's, it's kind of funny. That's, that's kind of like a, a full circle thing for mm-hmm. that team. But... I will say this, which is why I was trying to get you to stop throwing stats to, to beef them up. I think your team got hosed in game five. On the five, the too many men on the ice, and they yeah. got hosed again in game six because there was another too many men on the ice when they scored. Well, what about when the goalie of Avalanche had his helmet ripped off and they still counted that as a goal before it even, before the, I wouldn't want to block a puck without a freaking helmet on. Wasn't there a dispute last that's, year with the Islanders that, that's, about too many men on the ice for the... There yeah. was, yeah. I, yeah. I, I think there has to be a conversation now, especially in the about playoffs, because it's not reviewable. That. It's well, not reviewable in the playoffs, and I, I don't, think it should be. I don't think you make it reviewable during the regular season, because I'm all for not slowing down the game of hockey. As fast a game as that is, those are long games, and they can get really long when you go OT, which happened multiple times in the series, but... I do think that should be reviewable, especially near the end of a game. Isn't that hard though? Because like this isn't this isn't football with a snap where we get to right. count. We have people and lines coming in and off all the time. And like if you take just one snapshot of a photo, well, the, the issue the issue with the one in game five was there was a defensive player checking the guy, like spotting up on him on the ice 
to make sure he didn't get the puck down low near the goalie. And as he went to go off, that defenseman was trailing him instead of picking up the guy coming sure. on. Yeah, yeah. It was a it game. Felt like game a four, for the record. Oh, game four, four, not game, not game five. five. I'm sorry. Game I'm four. Sorry. Yeah. Game Pardon four me. was the overtime game. Yeah, the overtime goal in, in game four. Pardon yeah. me. Which, um, but it, but it's happened multiple times in this series, so it, yes. it, it warrants a discussion of whether or not that should be a reviewable call in in postseason moving forward. And I think it should be, and not just because Tampa Bay got hosed, but if we're going to be, especially when like games are decided on such minuscule types of plays, it should be reviewable. We should be able to get it right. Well, and I mean, dude, that's pretty much every game of, of hockey. Let's be honest. It is a very fast paced game. It's not conducive to going, ah, did someone get a hand on so-and-so here? Which is probably why it didn't get reviewed when his helmet got ripped off. Here's a uh, face mask, but um, it, it's interesting to me the way this has played out great series, both great teams, both going to be back in the conversation next year, but congratulations, all the avalanche fans out there. I think the right team won in the grand scheme of it. <laughs> I'm trying to end it just on like a very, very positive, positive note. And you just kind of go just, yeah, just drive, yeah, drive the stake through my heart. That's fine. That's cool. I got yeah, you, bro. Just no worries. Take it in there. Hey, how, how about the, just the way the cup was dented? I sent you guys the video, but what, literally one of the Avalanche players skating over to make the team photo trips and just boom, dents the cup. Like, that didn't last. Like, 30 minutes. Like, the cup did it 30 minutes, and it got dented. Like, usually well, it gets dented when they're drinking out of it or they're partying with it, but no. Maybe they minutes. should make it stronger what I, then. <laughs> what I find interesting is everybody panics over Tom Brady not damaging the championship the trophy, yeah. the, the Lombardi trophy in the NFL. And then that happens last night. No one says a word. It's hockey. Yeah. <laughs> it's completely completely we, I didn't we, even see it on the ESPN rundown this morning. Can we undoubtedly say though, that that is the best trophy in all the sports? Like, can we, like, I, I don't think there's a debate mm. at all. Like that is the coolest trophy in all of sports. Like, is everyone down. puts their mouths on it. I don't know that that's it's true. Just, it's awesome. It's, it's, it's a the, freaking... the fact that all of the names are etched on it for uh, like generations of hockey, hockey champions are, are etched on that trophy. It is like, it's 21 and a half pounds. I think to lift it over your head. Like that's not an easy task to lift that over your head. You can drink out of it. You can eat it out of it. Like like, did you just say it's hard time. to lift, time out. Did you just say it's hard to lift 21 pounds over your head? Yeah. I think, well, you, you know, when you're in full gear like that and you're on ice skates, 20, you're on ice skates, 21 pounds, two 10 pound dumbbells, just overhead press. You really 30, can't do 34 that. and a half, 34 and a half pounds, two 15 Excuse pound me. dumbbells. You can't do that. <laughs> You know, it's 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 not you know it's not the easiest thing to do when Working you're on you know your core a lot. You're, you're not overhead. You're on you're, you're you're on. I thought you're on he had an athletic of, slim body. <laughs> oh God, it is athletic and slim. I don't know that it, he can bulk up and, and lift in those ways. <laughs> Good lord. Uh, t- today's stop making today's those athletic noises. slim body. Please stop right, making those noises. Slim body. All right, let me do brought one to, more brought thing. Brought to you by our good friends at Built. Oh, uh, let no. me do one more thing before we get off of uh, off of sports that I'm very excited about. First time in a long time that my college team, the Longhorns, seem to have cracked the code and gotten the best quarterback that we have seen in years. Arch Manning going to Texas. Hook him, baby. Let's go. I'm interested to see how this plays out. So am I. I mean, there's no guarantee, by the way, that when you get to college, you're going to look the same way. But... There, there's like intangibles and there's a lot of people watching him because of his last name. Then everyone is like, he is that guy. He looks like he is legit. So I really hope that's the case because Colt McCoy was really good. But the last truly like take over a game, win a national title, put the team on his back, quarterback we had was Vince Young. Yep. Well, Which, by the way, you just named three of the highest-rated quarterback recruits ever in college football history. And I know. all three have now gone to Texas. Well, also, they have to figure out the code around him. They can have a great quarterback, but he needs a great team around him. Well, here's the thing. We haven't had issues with running backs or wide receivers. We've arguably had a pretty good line, but I would say just having Arch Manning is going to help them recruit because now you have Sarkeesian there, who's new blood, who – whether you think it's good or bad that he was under Saban for a while, 
to be he was able, under he was yeah. under Saban for a while. He was in the SEC. Now they're getting ready to go back to the SEC. You're going to be on the biggest stage of college football, playing who everybody thinks are the best teams in college football. And I think that is arguably a great thing, especially now that they have a quarterback with name recognition, because that's again been our downfall. We've only had, I think, two quarterbacks since Vince Young that had over a 500% winning percentage. I mean... When does that take effect that they go to the SEC? Is that 25? Uh, so right now, right now, right now, they're not al- allowed to go before 25. Yeah. Um, however, however, given next year, UCF moves into the Big 12 Conference. They, they All those additions start in the Big 12 next year. So Texas and Oklahoma are maneuvering to Texas, get out and join the SEC prior. Texas. 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 not in Florida. He doesn't know. <laughs> uh, you know what I can't wait way, for? I can't wait, Ryan. I cannot wait. I just realized this. By going to the Big 12, UCF is just going to feast on Kansas, and you're just going to sit there and be like, oh, man, 54 to nothing on the Kansas Jayhawks who haven't had a winning – they've won like two games in the last seven years. (laughs) And I'm just going to hear more of the same bull crap out of you. Yes, you will. It's going to be great when we beat up on Iowa State and Kansas. Just wait, 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 wait. wait, 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 Kansas State is going to market correct you so hard. Hey, time out. Iowa State might market correct you too. I, I would be careful about throwing that out there. Like you think they're just oh, don't no. I'm, I'm not. I'm not scared. The, the fighting Gus Malzons. We've got something coming for the Big Twelve. You just wait. That first year we get to face Gus Texas, Malzahn's. buddy. We're going to that Texas game, and I'm betting heavily on UCF to win that game because I don't care if Arch Manning is a quarterback. By the way, my biggest concern with Arch Manning. He's Cooper Manning's son. What has Cooper Manning ever done? Well, I mean, come actually, on. The, you know, the, if you go the back in. The there, but come out, on. Time out. You know, if, if he was hey, Eli's Ryan, son or if he was Peyton's son. Ryan, you know, if you ask Cooper? me a question, you have to shut up long enough for me to answer you. <laughs> Don't Stephen A. Smith me. I have a mute button. <laughs> All right. Are you good for a second? Can I tell you why that does matter? Cooper was. Nope. Okay. Well. <laughs> Go ahead. You have to tell me. Tell me. No, Cooper was actually as highly or more highly rated than Peyton and Eli in college before he got hurt. Also, you have like one of the best quarterback you- families who can tell you every yeah. coverage and every both yeah. of his uncles and his grand. Like, come on. Like, I mean, at that point, you're just kind of it's yours to screw up. You're born a gold. Honestly. Six- Honestly, General Booty's going to have a better career than Archman. <laughs> All right, let's mark that. He really thinks General uh, Booty no, is going to be more he successful. Just, he just wanted to say General Booty. I That's just wanted to was. say the name. Yeah, I wanted to say the name. Um, also, personally, just a quick little note. Uh, I got a nice little Gatorade shower this weekend uh, for a walk-off win for the first time, which was no really way. freaking cool. Did you yeah. get hit with the Gatorade? Really, really cool. Well, we need yeah. video the player of this. next time, the player next to him got hit with the Gatorade, and he was part of that shower. Yeah, but that's normally what happens that is, is whoever's that near is the dugout cool. gets hit. So, yes, you say that. However, G-Man Choi was definitely aiming for me and my all all black suit uh, for that, that Gatorade shower. So I will send you the video. There's actually a really cool slow-mo shot. Um, it, was, it was one of the highlights of my career. Ray's had back-to-back walk-offs, uh, and that was, that was really, really fun. So... Uh, shout out to Isak Paredes, who, who has had a week and uh, and getting that game winning hit and and yeah that that uh, dry cleaning bill I'm not sure who to who to send that to the Rays or Bally or, or what but, uh, um, someone's got to pay right for off it. bro you, yeah you chalk that one up to uh, to having a historic moment for yourself that's what that or is. just don't wash it I mean don't wash it leave leave it stained and. and... Saran wrap it. I don't know what you want to do. Saran wrap it. Shadow box it. <laughs> there you go. All just right. leave like it's got Gatorade all over it, so just leave it. Cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cool. I, I did. I did text the slow mo video to the group, so you can get a nice little shot of. Uh, I, look, I, I'm I'm pretty confident that uh, that I held it together, uh, was unfazed, and uh, as there are chunks of ice still hanging out in my suit jacket pocket, uh, went back right to questioning. So that's professional. We we appreciate that out of you. Very pro. Very pro. Congrats, dude. All right, let's go to movies. Movies. All right, did uh, you see this, Ryan? You did. Yep, yep. Awesome. To infinity. 
<laughs> it cut you off. <laughs> the internet literally did that. It we was didn't not even late. You go to us. infinity. All we heard was to infinity. It was a. You know, it's an intergalactic. <laughs> you're muting yourself, Stop. aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Lightyear PG 2022 comedy adventure hour and 45 minutes. Pretty quick runtime. Especially lately, I feel like everything's been over two hours. Um, so this movie, uh, I believe this is due in part to the fact that people are like review bombing it for two reasons. One, that it's not Tim Allen doing the voice. Two, that it's not related to Toy Story. And a lot of people somehow didn't know that going into this film. I don't know how that happened, but... 75% of you Rotten You can understand, tomatoes. because I don't think people would understand that going in. Like, they wouldn't think, you know, I mean, if, if you, you did zero trailer, research prior to this. If you saw the trailer, though. I mean, there's nothing about Toy Story in it. No. What, there's, I get there's, it, a, but, there's, but a, people, there's a reference to it. People assimilate him. There's a reference to it at the very beginning. Like a quick. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, I very do. But I'm saying, like. Like, so seventy. You can assimilate Buzz Lightyear with Toy Story. Yeah, seventy five percent of Rotten Tomatoes, forty six percent of Google users like this. Oof. I feel like that's pretty harsh. That's got to be skewed for just yeah. That that was my point. Yeah, not understanding what what the movie is. Um, legendary space ranger Buzz Lightyear embarks on an intergalactic adventure alongside ambitious recruits Izzy, Mo, Darby, and his robot companion Socks. So obviously, this was Chris Evans voicing Buzz Lightyear. Um. James Brolin, not Josh Brolin, not Josh, not Thanos. James Brolin uh, did Zerg in this film, which I find really amusing because Josh Brolin's been like the the bad guy and everything, and mm-hmm. this time it was James. Um, Taika Waititi was Mo, which I did not realize. I think that's awesome. Um, so I I have. One really weird aside question before I, we break down this movie, and I, I won't go into spoiler territory since it is new, and maybe everybody didn't. There's your uh, landline again, Ryan. Um, uh, that's, that's a that's an email, and you know I'm in my dad's office. There's landlines. There's there's Outlook. <laughs> you know, there's a printer. Who uses the a reminders. printer? There's a there's a printer. Like I don't I don't even know. What, like there's You're just thriving I feel like I'm in the nineties. Windows right ninety five out there. I love that. Yep. Yep. Microsoft. Rest in peace. By the way, pour one out since. Uh, Microsoft Internet Explorer is no longer a thing. I don't know if you knew that. I did not. Oh, yeah. It's officially yeah. gone. This yeah. year on now? It's officially yeah. gone. Wow. All right. That and the iPod. Yeah. Pour, pour one out for our homies. Yeah. <laughs> that and the iPod. <laughs> they stopped making it. I was like, oh, man. All right. So one weird question that I've been thinking about since I watched this movie. So the cat's name is Socks. And, you know, there was like a, a my favorite character in the entire thing. A, well, of course, because that's it's basically BB-8 from the Star Wars franchise. They like they have to have like one cute character that's sort of, you know, your comic foil that's making the, the cute, funny jokes like you're impairing my visual. He goes, how about now? Is this any better? And he goes, no, like when he's in his helmet, you know, what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. So there, there's moments like that where that happens throughout this film but um and maybe it's they got away with it because of the spelling but there was a socks the cat video game series uh based off i believe it was it was bill clinton's cat when he was in office so there was like a a actual trademark for socks the cat huh which i was like I wonder if they actually ran into that and had to pay him anything for it. That'd be interesting to be able to use socks, but neither here nor there. Uh, I'm interested to know what you thought. Did you like it? I thought it was okay. I, I felt like it was a money grab by Disney and Pixar just to do something off the, the Buzz Lightyear namesake. Um, and I, I think that's a little bit why it confused some people, some folks that were big Toy Story fans because yes, it's the backstory of Buzz. It's basically, how he got to where he is. Like, it's not, it's not based on as the director and the producer says, it's not based on the toy. It's based on the character, right? Right. Buzz Lightyear. I just, I thought it was okay. It was cute. It was like socks was my favorite like character in the entire film, but I just guy. felt like it was kind of a money grab. I cat felt guy. like it was an, an insane money grab. Yeah. I'm a big cat. Guy. I love cats. Big cat. Yeah. Big cat guy. Um, 
It's charming. It's cute. It's funny at times. Like I, I like the back and forth, but I, I was one of those movies that I could I could have done without. I just I don't think it adds to the aura of Buzz Lightyear. Like I think they I, I think it's just something that they did for playing off the you know the nostalgia of the character, if you will. That's kind of how I felt about it. All right. I didn't see it. You didn't say, well, she, yeah. she didn't see it either. Um, did you like it? Because I, I, I don't want to give away. I've heard people say it's better than what they expected, but it's not like, no, I think it's not going to blow you away. I, I think you guys are right. And I think I'm disconnected on this because I knew from watching the trailer that this was not a toy story movie, that it's based off of the character, but it's not the character that, you know, from the toy story films and that it's something different. Um, I think they leaned on a really easy trope with going through the hyperspace travel passage of time thing. I think that's kind of low hanging fruit for anything that's space related. That's Mm -hmm. just been done ad nauseum, but I, I get how they tried to set it up. I thought it was very interesting what they did with Zerg as the bad guy. I, that I, I won't, spoil anything i i thought that was really very interesting um but yeah i i guess i knew going in what it was do you think it would have been better if they just would have done an origin story like the black widow was an origin story that came out after the fact well i mean that kind of is what it was but i mean but i mean like same (laughs) Like same, same voice, same character, and then Easter eggs that you already know because of the movies you've already seen. I mean, they, they put several Easter eggs in there. They, they have like the phrases that you expect to hear. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, this is the thing throughout the, that movie, he's kind of a screw up, Mm -hmm. which is not actually, I understood now watching this film why Chris Evans was cast for this role because I do think Chris does a better job than maybe Tim Allen's personality would have for the origin story of, of Buzz Lightyear. Um, I thought, the, like, I think tr- I think Evans is better on that towing the line of like comedy versus like uh, realism isn't kind of the word I'm going for, but relatability, right? Comedy and relatability. I think, I think young Chris Captain Evans, America very well in Buzz Lightyear. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, yes, I do. I do. I think, I think he has the, the range to go between those two roles. And I think Tim Allen, I don't know if Tim Allen would have done the, the origin story like this justice in the way that, that Chris Evans did. Well, if you think about it, a toy is a toy. So he's, so he was taking on the role of a toy and this is a real person. So a toy is always happy, supposed to be always happy and playful and, it's it's made to be that way. This isn't somebody. This isn't something that was made. So it is a completely different personality, and the toy was made off the superhero part, not the the all encompassed life of Buzz. I don't know. I, I I thought it was good. That's about as far as I'll, I'll go. With it, has anyone ever asked Buzz Aldrin about this? Like. <laughs> Like, no. hey, do you feel like we've <laughs> we based this off of did. your life because you know you were a an astronaut and your name's Buzz? Unless he's not telling us that he found an evil robot overlord on the moon. <laughs> so don't ask him about if we landed on the moon because he'll punch you right in the face. We have we have a video of that. <laughs> yep. Yes, we do. Good lord. Uh, all right. What's uh, what's the movie for this coming week? What's it called? Hustle. Hustle. Hustle with Adam Sandler on Netflix. Hustle. And it is it is on Netflix. It is on Netflix. Okay. It is on Netflix. The last and time the I reviews said that out loud are with, fantastic. With certainty, I was wrong. It was not on Netflix. It's, it is it is owned by Netflix. It's part of the Adam Sandler uh, Happy Madison <laughs> universe. Is there not a volume button the, on the computer? I, I, it's over that. there. There's a screensaver. Okay. So you remember the old screensavers? I just wanted to show you my dad's. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, that's amazing. If that doesn't give you nostalgia, but okay, you have to tell me what what was your go to screensaver back in the day? Were you like one of the rotating through pictures kind of screensaver? The active ones? Like, what was your screensaver back right. in the day? I think you're greatly overestimating what screensavers were the first time I was using one. 
There was a laser beam one that was kind of like that one that you see, but there was like thinner. Was it the one where you feel like you were going through a maze? Do you remember the one where? Oh, yeah. It's, it's oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I loved that one. That one was great. Yes. There was one uh, flying through space. Yep, there that was. One? There was that one. That was the one that everybody had on the their like homeroom computer. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that was good times. Yeah. Oh, top screensavers of all time. Let's go. Let's go. The little deep Windows dive logo there. hitting the waiting for it to, waiting oh, for it to hit the corner. Oh, <laughs> that was so frustrating to me because you would stare at that little Windows logo and be like, "Oh, it's almost there." Oh, it bounced off again. Yep. Oh, it was. Yeah, it was. It was. It was a, the best. Ooh, look at this pixel party! Like it's nineteen ninety nine with the best screensavers from last millennium. Ooh, the maze. Ah, uh, the Starfield. Starfield was a great one. Flying Toasters. You guys ever remember Flying oh, Toasters? Oh, yeah. yeah. That was a good one. That was a good one. Johnny Castaway? Johnny Johnny oh. Castaway, anyone? Oh. Oh, what about the Mopey Fish? Oh, yep. I remember the fish. I don't think I remember the fish. I don't fish remember the fish. That might be the age gap. It was, no, it, it was old, old, old. Just like slowly oh. swimming around like, burp, burp. Oh. <laughs> Is that what fish sound what like? What was it doing? <laughs> I mean, if you look at the way they open their mouth, I'm pretty sure they're going, burp, burp. They, they bark like a dog? <laughs> I'm not barking. I'm going, burp. I'm going, burp, basically, in a long O form. Burp. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, speaking <laughs> of throwbacks, <laughs> let's go to the hot take. Hot take! All right, guys. I we're s- doing it. I set them up. You knock them down. Let's go. We're doing it. We've done... What what was the one that was sort of like this that we did before? Was it eighties? Uh, I think so. There was another we one. Did that we did an eighties movie one. We also did uh, best comedy. No, I don't know. I don't know. It's two. We, years. we two did years not do this. Takes. We did not do this. <laughs> no, we did not. Um, and it popped up on Barstool, and I was like, you know what? That is a great thing to debate. We should absolutely do this. So we are going to go. With the best 90s movie of all time. So anything from the 90s. Um, would, would you like me to just go ahead and say that you're just going to be Titanic before we get there? or <laughs> That's rude. <laughs> when, that the, when Celine Dion came up. Yeah. yeah. The, well, go for the easy, that, go that for the easy win. Go for the easy win. That actually isn't my answer. Okay. Good. All right. Good, good, good. good. Um, I gotta be honest. This is really tough for me because I, I spent a lot of time on this. This was when I was a kid and, oh man, I, it's so, it's so hard. It's what, hard. what did you go with? I want to make sure I don't overlap with somebody because I've got about three that I, it, are all very different and it's making it really, really hard because the, you were not limiting to genre. We're just doing a decade. It's like your favorite song of the nineties. Right. Like, it's probably, really is, hard. Mine is probably an underdog of the nineties. That is still. All right. What, what's yours? So as much as I love Titanic, this movie set up one of the top, my top favorite three franchise movies ever. Okay. What did I just bring up to y'all not too long ago? We're coming up on the 25th anniversary. Well, I mean. Matrix. Nope. Men in black. Oh, okay. That is so. Men in Black came out in '97, and the reason why I'm making this my favorite movie, as much as I love Titanic, and you know I'm a huge advocate for Titanic, love Titanic, but because it was the first movie that set up the franchise of my one of my favorite franchises of movies. Like Men in Black is in my top three favorite franchises of movies, and the original Men in Black you can never never go wrong, and it's also my favorite ride at Universal Studios. One of my favorite rides at Universal Studios. But anyways, that's besides the point. There are a lot of great one-liners in that movie. There's so many. I am half the man you are. (laughs) (laughs) And then you have Frank the Pug and just everything. Wait, what? Why is that your pick for a line from that movie? It always stuck with me. I don't know why. It just did. That is very random line. line. Did you know that he... That's the second one. um, uh, Isn't it? uh -uh. No, it's the first one. That's the first one. That's the first one? Because that's when the the first scene... It's the second one where they... they, they, Oh, they zap K. That's right. That's right. I'm getting slipped. Vincent. Sugar. Um, yeah. That, in that movie, he 
he actually yeah, it was Vincent D'Onofrio. Yeah, yeah, who played Kingpin in the Daredevil yeah. most recently. So like as a lot of people don't even realize that was him, yep. but he he wore like splints on his legs and like did a whole bunch of like method acting so that he would have that like signature walk that yeah. that character has. Edward was, wasn't his name. Um Edward. It was yeah. like Agar. Edgar. 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 She was like, she said it really weird. Agar. Yeah, in the movie. So uh, I, I I agree that is a fantastic. It's a good one. A so it, it is the start of one of my favorites. So I'm going to have to go with that one. A person is smart. People are dumb, panicky animals, and you know it. <laughs> <laughs> Great movie. Great movie. That is really good. Ryan, um, Ryan what do you got? Hang on. A door just randomly opened over here. I'm a little little creeped out. He's so choosing go Ghost. <laughs> Ghost, which was an this, 80s movie. This, this, that doesn't count. <laughs> Blair Witch pro- Project. Okay. Got it. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, what What's yours, Josh? <laughs> I do have my movie. Oh, oh go, 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 ahead, go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. So, to me, and this was just because, and the first five minutes of this movie, in my opinion, are the most realistic five minutes you'll ever see in any movie period, especially any war movie. Saving private Ryan in 1998 was one of the most with his name in it. I <laughs> no, but it, it, I, Saving I, it, private Ryan from you, Miami. You brought up 90s movies. When you brought up nineties movies, the like the realism in that entire movie just it is by the way the most accurate war film ever made i, I remember you made this and argument when we did insane. war movies yeah you did save it was fantastic Ryan. yeah it's it's fantastic it is it is one of the best movies ever made it's one of the most accurately depicted movies ever made it's emotional it's I, the way they shot it was fantastic so and i thought tom this is one of tom hanks's best performances ever so saving private ryan False. for me in 98 was uh, it's really good. Forrest Gump. You could put but Forrest Gump in there too, which obviously is a nice. Which is a nice movie. Is that what you're going with? No, no. It's okay. Not. It's I was not. I was wondering if it was the the Tom Hanks meta. No, I mean you. you know you know how I love the great one, but uh, so this was tough because this is I mean it's all of our eras, but specifically like this yeah. is like our coming of age era, and it's hard to divorce my love for like Home Alone from is that actually the okay. best one of the 90s you know what okay I'm saying? so here's the thing i i would have picked home alone i did not because that is what i say my favorite all-time christmas movie and i feel like that just pigeonholes it too much even though i love that movie it might be number one in my heart it's number one for me around christmas time not the entire year for sure and so i i struggled i struggled with this because there's a lot of really great movies that were really important to me And so I decided to land on something that was quintessential 90s, something that if you watch, because Saving Private Ryan is not actually set in the 90s, and I'm going with something that is actually set in the 90s, that in a time capsule, if we watched this movie now, you would go, wow, this really like sums up everything that happens in the 90s, how people talked, how people dressed, how people looked. And so I'm choosing the classic from 1995, Clueless. Oh, oh my, my gosh. God. <laughs> you want to know what's really God. funny is being a girl, I've never liked the movie Clueless ever. That's fine. I just thought it was ever. annoying as wow. hell. <laughs> That's fine. Didn't see that one coming, did you? Wow. No, I did not. I thought really, with the way you were describing this, I thought you were getting ready to go with like The Fugitive. I no, love The Fugitive, <laughs> and I, I ride hard for The fl- for the Fugitive, but no. Oh, I mean, how about shout out to early, early Paul Rudd, by the way, in that movie? Absolutely. That's Josh. The mm-hmm. okay. The so oh, you picked saving, something with your. We have saving too? Private Ryan by Ryan. We have a movie <laughs> with a character named Josh by Josh and Clueless. Yeah, which we didn't talk. How weird that is enough because he's her stepbrother, and then they yeah yeah. It's, yeah it's, anyway, it's anyway, it's a little weird. Men in Black, Clueless. <laughs> would never have guessed that one if you had me pick 10 movies. I mean, if but like, look at the fashion, the songs, I did, I everything. I that is it. 90s to a T. I am going with something that I believe is 90s to a T, but it's still a movie that you can watch today. And surprisingly, of all the picks that I could have gone, and I could have gone with The Fugitive. I love that movie. I love that movie. Um, I chose to go with something that is just pure rewatchability childhood for me. 
You're going rom com here, aren't you? I'm going with the Lion King, baby. Oh. Ooh. I just the, the music, that soundtrack, the story. I mean, I, it's really tough to beat. What a weird four movies. Oh, we yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're definitely all over the map. This is going to be very interesting to see what you guys vote on. We got a war, an alien, a blonde bimbo, and a. <laughs> <laughs> Look, hey. She was for, very intelligent. For this week. <laughs> For this week, until we can confirm that we can pull the IG back up, I'm sure we'll get it this week. But just to be safe, do you want to put both of those polls on my page? Sure. Let's do it. All right. So make sure you do that. Chris Young Music, go to my IG. I'm going to put them in the story once we create them from last week, Sunrise versus Sunset. This week, between these four, what is the best, most quintessential 90s film? Clueless, The Lion King, Men in Black. Or saving private right. I want to watch all these movies. Yeah, I know. I'm kind of down with all of them. Hey, hey, um, the reason why this is even better is because for the 25th anniversary of Men in Black, July 3rd and 4th, it will be playing in movie theaters. (laughs) I might have to go watch that in a movie theater. Yeah, um, that's what I'm doing July 3rd. I'm going to watch this movie. Okay. Well, uh, guys, make sure you check it out. As always, thank you for listening to The Quad with Chris Young from Ryan, Josh, Haley, and myself. We love you guys. This is so much fun. Thank you for listening. Make sure you go check out the YouTube. Rate, review, subscribe, and...